What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Fight Within podcast. Today's guest is music artist Ryan Ellis. Thank you so much for coming on, man. The one and only. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, like I say, every episode, let's take a just dive right in. Tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to where you're at now. Man, okay. Well, I uh, I grew up in San Diego, born and raised, mm-hmm. and um, I lived there till I was about 16 years old, and uh, and then I moved up north. And, uh, you know, but growing up in San Diego, learned a lot. You know, I was in the dance community for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Filipino, half Filipino, half white. So oh, I really? With that's a lot why. Of, that's, a, that's the boy right here. Stop being right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Love we were like, yo, this one's so, 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 so good looking. Right? So very handsome, <laughs> huh? <laughs> but I was, uh, but yeah, so, you know, the vibes, it's like, you born singing and dancing out the womb. Filipino culture yeah. is just, yeah. it's, it's all about family and joy and, and food. And um, and my mom, you know, she's an amazing singer. And so she she kind of just really instilled that in me at a young age. And and um, and so I always had like a heart for the creative arts. And then uh, and I taught myself how to do a backflip by watching the Power Rangers. You know, I was yes. watching, crazy. Watching the Power Rangers. Who's your you know, favorite Power Ranger? Oh, bro, you know, you got to go Red Ranger, but then the Green Ranger came, you know, and then the Tommy. White Ranger was a vibe. You're like, yo, but then, yeah. you, know, you know, you get older, you start appreciating the other Rangers. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. So, yeah, you know, and, uh, and yeah, they had the, the Asian homie, the Yellow Ranger, you know, and messed up, yeah. right? They had all that at a Black Ranger, Black homie. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyways. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I was just really active, bro. And then I got into cheerleading at a young age because I taught myself how to do a backflip. And then I got onto this national competitive cheer squad. And okay. so it was all girls. And it was just me. I had and, no uh, idea about this. Yeah, bro. That's yeah. why I love this podcast. Yeah, man. I was like yeah. six, seven years old. And um, it was like I taught myself how to do a backflip. The next week, I'm at this cheer audition because uh, my mom's boyfriend was a photographer. So he's taking photos for this this cheer camp thing and he's like yo my son you can do a backflip and so they're like do it and i'm like me i just do the backflip and now i'm on this all girl squad and uh and at first i was like yo this is this is kind of nice you know we're, we're having i didn't know it was that level you know like yeah. until i get onto the stage and i see the i see the audience you know it's like hundreds of people you know and you're learning these moves and it's it's high level uh just performance and so i did that for a couple years and uh and it was crazy it was like a movie we took first place at every competition went to the espn Uh, you know on tv everything and and uh the big trophy like you know like a 10-foot trophy like well you know and um so that was crazy and then moved on to hip-hop you know uh there was a hip-hop crew that was uh practicing in the same gym and they were playing their music and i was like yo what's going on over here and then I uh, I snuck over there and um, and it was cheaper actually to do hip hop because the classes were free, you know. So I was like, I had to pay to be on this cheer squad because it was like you had to pay for you know all this stuff. And I was like, Man, I can show up here looking rugged and I can just dance hip hop. And uh, it was like the beginning phase of hip hop in San Diego. And so did that for a while, and then um, that's when I met the Jabberwockies. Have you guys heard of the Jabberwockies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so they came from the Bay, and I was in San Diego, and they're joining Culture Shock. And, um, and again, I say like, they came with, they're like Kung Fu masters, you know, like a whole new style, a whole new way of like doing dance and everything. And, um, and that influenced me a lot too. And that was like how I met the Jabberwock homies. We, I, you know, they asked me to be in the Jabberwockies after a couple of years of, of hanging with them. And, uh, they were the first ones that really took me to church. You know, I grew up kind of oh, really? ratchet. Yeah. I was doing all this like really cool, high performance, you know, creative arts and yeah. performing arts, but you know, me and my, you know, my mom and dad, they split when I was three years old and, and, um, and, you know, we, you know, my mom was on welfare, you know, we were poor and, and, and so, you know, I was, I was crazy, you know, I just kind of run in the streets and then, um, and these homies were like the first ones that really like take me to church. They took me to rock church in San Diego, um, pastor miles McPherson. And, mm-hmm. and that's when I was like, I was like, man, yo, there's, there's gotta be something else than this. You know, yeah. I kind of was like a, a wake up call, but then I still was wilding out, you know, for a few years after that. How, how old were you at this time? I was like 16 years old. No, okay. I was like 14 years old. Okay. It was on a good Friday. And I remember the Katinas were playing. You remember the Katinas? Mm-hmm. They're like, they're brown homies, bro. And they like, wherever you are, wherever <laughs> you've been, it don't matter to him. And I was like, 
<laughs> maybe there is a god and i was just like you know i don't know there's something about that and and i just i like the idea of you know you know these homies would get together they read the bible you know i was young i was like 14 15 broken home and it felt like family you know it mm -hmm. felt like okay this is a place a safe place and i was you know i learned a lot there and then and then i moved up north i moved up to the uh visalia fresno area okay and um and then uh you know, my mom met a dude again, and we moved up north. You know, this homie was in agriculture. Isn't this funny? It's so crazy. And it was just like, I left everything, the dance culture, everything. And I moved up, and it was just like a bunch of cowboy, cowboys, bro. California cowboys. Bakers, you know, yeah. Visalia, yeah. like NorCal. And those homies are, I mean, I mean, but I learned good family morals up there, you know, because yeah. it was like small town, mm -hmm. you know, from San Diego and, you know, big city to going up there. It was like, um, it was like, okay, you know, I, I found a girl. I kind of settled down for a little bit, you know, wasn't wilding out and uh, met her family and they kind of, and I just started like, I need to get myself together, you know? And um, and then I joined the Navy after high school, mm -hmm. graduated high school, didn't have a plan. And I just kept hearing my mom, my grandma's voice in the back of my head, like, you know, she's like, I, you need to join the Navy. You know, she always <laughs> said to me every time I do something wrong when I was younger. She's like, I so get like a resident, she's like, you need to join the Navy, <laughs> you know, or something. and. Uh, and I was like literally living at my best friend's house, Nick Carlson, shout out the Carlson family. But I was like, I was just lost, bro. And um, and I just kept hearing, I was like, maybe I'll join the Navy. You know, I looked up online, I saw the Navy SEALs and I was like, yo, that's 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 hardcore. You know, yeah. I want to do that. Yeah, and because that. uh, that's just always how I've been. I've always been like all or nothing, you know, mm -hmm. like kind of just Whoa. from a young age. And so I was like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go special forces. And then uh, so I went out. I signed up for the Navy and um, and then I, I went out for the special forces, you know, I tried out and, the, and then I passed out. <laughs> I tried really? out. You got to do like a physical fitness test to like to for them to be like, OK, you're going to go into the Navy as, you know, special forces, you know, or in that program. And I passed out, bro. I was like I, they, I was doing all these pools. I was in great shape. Bro. I, was, I was in swimming in high school and wrestling. And I did all that, and uh, and as I was going out for, I had to run, you know, uh, like three miles under, you know, I can't remember. It was something ridiculous, mm -hmm. but I was like, I was charging, you know. And but they had me doing a little more. I was in Lamore, California, and it was yeah. so hot. And I was like, and I passed out. I passed. It was a dirt field. I remember waking up. The Navy SEAL trainer was like, "Bro, <laughs> you you failed." <laughs> I was like, "Dang it!" But I did it in boot camp, and I passed in boot camp. I was training with the SEALs and. You know, it was a trip, bro. And I was and uh and I was in boot camp getting whooped, you know, and and then and then one night I was in my rack and I was and I was like I was I was ready, bro. I was like I had really no other purpose. I was like, I'm ready to do this, you know, ready to you know, it's like yeah. you, know, you you make that switch and I was like and then all of a sudden it was like poo like this like thing, just like, you know, it was God, bro. It was like just like showed me as like that kid who was cheerleading on stage you know mm -hmm. and that kid who was on on stage dancing hip-hop and um and doing those bible studies and there was like a joy you know but you know after i moved from san diego it was just rough bro i had like a lot of hard time you know got in you know into drugs and partying and just not having any self-worth you know i think mm -hmm. and just a lot of anger issues growing up and you know, so it really turned me and I just kind of lost all that. And when I was I was sitting there, it was like God showed me my life. And he was like, and he showed me that, like that, that purity. And then afterwards, like what it would be like, you know, if I went through through with this, you know, going special forces and doing the whole thing, being like, this is going to be my life. You mm -hmm. know, I was dead set on it. And um, and so then I dropped out of the program <laughs> and I was like, were you seeking that, though? Were you looking for those answers while you were there? Or is it something that just happened no, bro it was honestly like just boom hit me out of nowhere Dang. i was just sitting there getting ready to go to bed and then it just flashed in front of my my brain and I, and that's what really every time i've had these encounters in my life you know you had these like you know there's like these encounters these things yeah. that happen things align or you get you know something divine happens and it's so real because you weren't even expecting it yeah know? and nobody else can tell you you know so I was ready to go, bro. I was in shape. I was I was uh -huh. training. I was getting ready to do that. And it was like, it was like God just showed me, like, yo, this is not what you're supposed to be doing, bro. This is like what you were born to do was do music, you know, and to uh -huh. be in the creative arts. But I wasn't even on my grid. I was, you know, 18 hour days getting drilled into and I was 
and I was getting good. I was at the top of my class, you know, then they, they really liked me. And, um, you know, it set me on my whole path. After that, it was like my first step of faith. When I dropped out of the program, I got PT'd for like three hours by my drill instructors. You know, they were like, you can't fucking quit on us. And I was like, <laughs> I was like ah. and I was like, you know, but I was like, this is so real. And I didn't even have a grid for it. It wasn't God. It was just like this deep inner knowing, you know. Anyways, send me that, you know, I get sent to Boston for two and a half years uh, on this on the ship called the USS Constitution it was honor duty. Um, you know, and I did crazy things. And then I and then I got into the CBs, which was a con uh, combat engineer uh, operation. And and uh, and then, you know, I kind of like found God in the middle of all this military stuff because I was I was wilding out, man. I was like a young man. I was in my 20s trying to figure out what to do with my life. And uh, and I really had no direction. And then I almost got kicked out of the Navy. I almost mm -hmm. got kicked out because, uh, you know, there was like rumors of, you know, you know, people smoking weed and doing uh -huh. and, and acting up and stuff. And uh, and they drug tested us and they drug tested my roommate and he popped on the on the test. And um, and I didn't, you know, mm. they tried to get him to rat on me. And he was like, I'm not snitch. And he totally, you know, it was crazy, man. It was like, a, it was, a, you know, those moments you're like, the eye I, openers. I got to get my shit together, bro. I got to yeah. get my yeah. life together. And uh and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hadn't, I hadn't spoken to my mom in like three years after I joined the Navy. Um, I get this text message, you know, it's like, God is good. You know, she sent me these Bible verses. And I'm like, you know, what is this? You know, even when the moms do that, yeah. you just kind of like ignore it. And and then she just kept sending it, kept sending these messages. And then uh, I was like, okay. Uh, and, and it was like that moment I was like, if I don't do something about my life right now, you know, like. I'm just gonna, it's gonna get worse, you know? And I, and it was like a wake up call, bro. I was standing at attention in my dress whites while my homie was getting kicked out of the Navy mm, in front of everybody. And I was like, that could have been me, bro. You know, I'm not saying I did. <laughs> That's not what we're saying here. But, you know, I'm not but it's like, I was just seeing myself and it was a trip, you know? And, um, it was hardcore, you know, and and I so I was like, all right, I need to get my stuff together. And then my mom was like, I'm I'm dating this new guy now, Ryan. And, he's, and he's, <laughs> I was like, what? You know, you know, it's like my whole life. It's like, but I love my mom, bro. You know, she just again, you know, you see your parents, you know, you know yeah. they just did their best, bro. They did the best that they could, and and I love her. And and this homie came through, and he was a real one. You know, he they met on ChristianMingle.com, <laughs> and uh, and this is back in the day. And I was like, what the heck? And he started, you know discipling me he started like reading me the bible you know i started answering asking him questions and uh -huh. i was like what about this what about this and this homie got his master's in apologetics from biola dang you know and i was like and i never had a father like that growing up so you know i called him i put him you know i was i was like okay you family now bro this is like i'm you know what is yeah. going on what is and i call him at two o'clock in the morning dirk you know and he's he's my my stepdad now they got married but you know, and he answered all these questions. It was like this real foundation of the word, you know, uh -huh. just like the Bible. And I really didn't trust it at first because, you know, you got all these people who say whatever. But, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And it was very amazing to get that info and that background. And so I kind of went with that, got filled with a lot of head knowledge. Now I'm in the Navy. I'm filled with Bible head knowledge. And I'm thinking I'm the man. I'm like, yo, you need <laughs> Jesus, bro. You know, and I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, it was interesting, though, because you know, I, you know, I switched, I switched up my whole style and I was very much a Bible thumper and I just believe what I believe. You know, if I believe it, then it's like, yeah. I'm about it, you know, sold out. I'm sold out. So I thought that was the way. And then this homie, um, you know, I was on this night hike this one time and I met this guy and he had just got back from this thing called YWAM and it was like a, mm -hmm. a Holy Spirit missionaries thing, you know, and you know, but I was like on that John MacArthur vibe, you know, I was like, you know, what, you know, what's that other homie's name? Piper, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was very legalistic back in the day. Uh, yeah. And, um, and I was, you know, I'd invite the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witness inside and I'd be trying to get them converted. <laughs> you know, I was on a different level back then. And, and this homie was looking at me and, and he was talking about speaking in tongues. And I was like, yo, what is that about? <laughs> you know, and I was like, yo, you better be careful. Demon possessed man, you know, like. <laughs> You know, you see all these things. You see Benny Hinn and people yeah, getting knocked over yeah. with jackets. And you're like, I don't Benny know what Hinn. to believe. I'm from the street. I see this. And I'm like, you know, what's going on here? You guys are all devised, you know. And, but I picked a side and I was like, you know, I just wanted to be, 
I wanted the lines to be clear for me. I needed it in my life. Why? Why? Why did you want the like? Out of necessity, but why? Why did you feel like those lines needed to be clear for you? You know, and I think about it, I think it's like because I like there's truth, you know, mm. and um, and I think truth is it was is something that like you know I think we're all searching for like what's real, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and so when I had to boil it down. You know, and that's kind of just how my brain works, man. Sometimes I just boil it all down, you know, and I'm, I think be thinking like that. But then when it came to, you know, God and all these things and, you know, and the way I was being discipled to, you know, it was like the gifts are not, you know, the miracles are not for now anymore, you know, or like these different things. And so you saw people operating and, you know, you see something and you don't really know the full story and you think like, you know, I was putting my own judgments on it, you know, like these homies, maybe they only do it for money and you think it's fake and you think all these things. So I was just protecting my own heart, making sure like I didn't get hurt. You know, I didn't believe a mm -hmm. false gospel that I don't go down the wrong road, you know. So I don't know. You kind of make clear lines in the sense of like, OK, this is this is how you live a healthy life. This seems like more like a show mm -hmm. and this is more like, you know, anyways. But. I don't know. This homie was like, yo, you just need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, he was talking about speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, you're tripping. And he was like, you just need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, you can baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Is that how it works? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I my, <laughs> had my brother there, I had a couple other homies I was discipling. And I was like, and I remember, and this is like my beginning steps of faith. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is like what I've learned life is. It's about faith. It's about, you know, trusting God in that way. But you know, I remember closing my eyes and and saying, God, if this is you, I trust you. And if it's not, protect me, you know. And um, and I closed my eyes and this homie put his hand on my shoulder and he was like, and I just like, I felt like my body got lit up, you know. And to this day, I really don't know how to explain that to other people. But it was just like, um, I don't know, I got zapped. And I just like, you know, and he was. He was, you know, they call it like reading your mail, you know, when yeah. someone's like praying over you and they know stuff and God's like, give me, you know, I've never experienced anything like that. And I was just like, okay, it was interesting. I opened my eyes and I felt like I had opened my, it was the first time opening my eyes. And it's like the way I'm looking now is like how I, you know, I felt like everything else is a dream, bro. From cheerleading to hip hop to the military to standing here in this neighborhood at 12 o'clock at night and being like, whoa, there's something more, bro. There's something bigger, you know? And um, and it just it caught my curiosity, you know. And I was like, how do I get more of that? What does that look like? This, you know, this spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit. And so, I had, you know, I picked up a guitar, I started playing music again, and uh, and I started writing songs again because it was like, you know, <laughs> it was funny. After I got out of the military, I couldn't get a job anywhere. You know, mm. I had no experience. You know, and that's what they would tell me. They're like, oh, you know, we need the dishwasher. I was like, what? I was like, I just like <laughs> led teams of 30 in that in the desert, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and so I was kind of like, I was unemployed, I, I, you know, and I was just I was just waiting on God. And then I just felt like, you know what, what I can do is I can get this guitar. I can go into these coffee shops. You know, this owner came up to me because he heard me, heard me talking about God and Jesus. And he was like, bro, I got saved during the Jesus movement, you know? And it was all these layers that I, I started like finding out like the history of like the Jesus movement, mm -hmm. how that started in Orange County, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, and I met I've met all these OG players and like that thing, bro, that I got hit with 1230 at night was that thing, you know, that it, that yeah. it goes back to, bro. And so you and so it was like meeting like God was opening these doors and I was just like and he was like, yo, you can use my coffee shop if you want to do these worship nights, you know, and I was like okay, God, that's an open door right there, yeah. you know? And he was like, he was like, I actually got this coffee shop because I, I got saved during the Jesus movement and this is what I wanted to do here. And I was like, all right. So then I just freestyle, bro. I didn't know any songs. Like I'm like pure, bro. I barely knew any like church song. I would go to like Calvary Chapel and these different things and I could just, it was just wasn't the vibe. I was like, this is, I could see the hierarchy and this like, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, it's easy. I can just get in here, I can worship. And this is like, and then I was going off of Live at the Banks. You know, you guys have heard of United Pursuit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. United mm -hmm. Pursuit, they sing that song, you know, break every chain. Yeah. Break. yeah. Well, it started off like in a house church in Knoxville, Tennessee. And these homies were just doing the same thing. And I'd listen to this album, you know, on CD for hours, bro. And I would just sit there and it was the first time I really ever felt peace, you know, my whole life. 
it felt like, you know, you know, like it just like, it's just going, you yeah, know, yeah. just nonstop. And even sometimes I feel like that, you know, and this cold brew is really good too. So it got me <laughs> juice, you know, help, you know, but it's like, it always kind of feels like that. And the only time I really ever felt peace was when I like listened to this music and I sat down and it was like, the purpose was to get into God's presence. You know, that's like a trippy thought. Yeah. But I never had that growing up, meditating or anything. And yeah. uh, and this was doing it for me. So I'd just get in this coffee shop. I play these songs and I try to just do what I, I saw these homies do. And then it went from like two, three people to like 150 people in this coffee shop now. And like pastors reconciling and like we see miracles, healings, people getting diseases cured. And, mm -hmm. and that was stuff that I wanted to see because I came from... You know, the military, bro, I just was in Afghanistan. I was just in war. I was like this. And, and again, I if it's not real, bro, like my most of my homies, they get mad at me because I'm the one who's too honest, you know? But it's like that's how I got set on fire was really seeing the move of God like this in a way I never saw. And so moved up to Santa Barbara. I heard there's this these homies that were praying for kids. They were praying for college kids and handing out hamburgers, you know? Yeah. And uh, I went up there and I... Uh, and I saw this town called Isla Vista in mm -hmm. Santa Barbara. It's like one of the biggest party cities in California, right next to the UC, you know, UC Santa Barbara. And they have this house there where kids, you know, girls live on top, the boys live on the bottom. And every Friday night they give out hamburgers to all, it's like thousands of party kids. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I didn't go to college. So it was the first time I saw that, you know, but then I was on that Jesus vibe. So it was really cool to see that there was a people that were out here in this group of kids, you know, so I was, I was like, all right, let's see, you know, what you're doing here, God. And then we started seeing healing and miracles and people getting saved on the street. You know, kids that were drunk and, you know, high, they'd come up and I'd be like, bro, have you ever met the Holy Ghost? You know, and then we just pray for them and they'd be sober, like 100 percent sober. And I was like, you know, but I was on that vibe for a long time where I was like, I wanted to see the miracles. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to see those mm -hmm. types of things, you know, and I think if you ask God for specific things, he'll show you because. I haven't seen miracles like that lately because I've been asking for different things. Yeah. You know, I've been asking for God to, you know, help promote the music or open doors with people or help partner with, with organizations that I really believe in. And, you know, I'm more about relationships now, you know? Yeah. So it's like, so I saw that. I saw miracles and I saw wonders, signs and wonders. And I learned about Sonship in Ala Vista. And I wrote a song there and uh, called Resurrection Power because it was like, you know, it was about, the experience I was having, like, now I have resurrection power living on the inside, Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just like this revelation. I got the Holy Ghost now. And it was to gear up these college kids to go out to these streets where it was like thousands of college kids were just debating them, bro, like just gnarly stuff all the time. And uh, so it was our anthem. And then that was my first cut from Chris Tomlin. So Chris Tomlin, he's like, you know, he's like the yeah. Drake yeah, he's, of Christian music, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it was yeah. like, I had no idea, you know, you know, Christian music was like, you know, this industry, you know? Um, but, you know, his homie reached out, you know, he heard it in Hawaii, their worship, there was like thousands of kids in YWAM, oh, that, was, that place that homie came from. Yeah. And they're all singing, oh, I have read. I mean, they sent me videos and I'm like, what the heck? You know, it's like, now I'm like a little bit, you know, no, like people know, but this is like, back in the day bro and i had you know i just wrote this in a garage i'm seeing thousands of kids sing the song and i was like god what the heck like i remember him talking to me in boot camp you know like you're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing music you know? yeah so chris cuts the song and then um when i just started meeting a bunch of homies you know it's like it was like one one thing after the other met Met the house fire homies, met Pat Barrett, you know, right after he met Good Good Father. Actually, he came out to California years before. Have you guys heard of, you guys know House Fire? Yeah, they're one of my favorite like worship bands still to this day. Yeah, man. I mean, they're legit. It's just that pure, yeah. you know, um, Shanda. And so I I met Pat years before he even released Good Good Father. He came out to Orange County because God told him, you know, come out there for a worship night. Um, I ended up meeting him. He's sitting in the back of my Mazda hatchback. You know, he used to have long hair and he used to like cover his face, you know? No, and so I'm funny. like, I was showing him all these songs, you know, I'm like, yo, what do you think about this, bro? But I didn't really know who he was. And then like years later, he hits my phone up and he, and it says, Pat, you know, someone actually told me, hey, Pat Barrett's going to hit you up because he wants to do a worship night out in California. And I was like, what? 
good good father help me and he's like and i call and he's like bro i was sitting in the back of your mazda you know three years ago bro and you were showing me these That's songs dope. and i was yeah. like what the heck and so he came out and um yeah, man, and we started doing these house churches out in Orange County with Michael Ketter and another crew called Gospel House, Charlie Grooms and Michael Skolos. And it was just all these pieces that came together. You know, being in Isla Vista, a lot of people came up there to do the ministry. And so I met a lot of amazing people all throughout Orange County and, and California. And they, you know, it was just like this perfect moment in time, move down to Orange County, start these house churches up with Michael Ketter, who was a part of United Pursuit, mm -hmm. that those, those homies I was worshiping to for years. But he came out here from a word from God. We did these house churches and they blew up and saw amazing miracles, signs and wonders. And then I got married and then I, you know, I met my wife when I was in Isla Vista and um, got married, had some kids and then um, signed a record deal and then put some music out and songs on the radio. You know what I'm saying? So it's been, it's been a journey since, since all that, but that's kind of like, the whole journey bro I'm yeah excited. this is so people that don't know like that don't know who you are like obviously i've gotten to, to know you over the last several years like he's talking about gospel house and stuff like that like i've hosted gospel house at my coffee shop which yeah. is ironic that's how we got to start yeah. right so our circles have crossed so many different times and one of the things i love so much about this podcast is like this platform and, and this setting is i'm learning so much about your story right mm. i've i've heard a lot of different pieces but i haven't heard the full piece and so hearing it all and then me as a third party watching and listening for the last several years has been really rad to see like where you're at. Like mm -hmm. you and I just reconnected last week for the first time in months. Right. Yeah. And I was telling him that outside perspective. Right. It's always the outside perspective. Like <laughs> You're looking in. I was like, dude, Ryan, it's so sick to see like me. Right. I was like, yeah. it's so sick to see how well you're doing. Like you're blowing up. And then his instant response was kind of like, yeah, yeah. And then I could tell there was like, there was more to that though, right? <laughs> As I yeah. always complain about people prejudging me, mm. I was saying it to you in a way of like, dude, I'm so stoked to see where you're at. Because yeah. even just a mere couple years ago, yeah. you know, that, that, that exponential growth. Mm -hmm. And so I think for listeners that don't know who you are, like just to kind of recap, because I, I, I know we have some questions, but yeah. Um, Dude, you, you went from growing up with no religious faith or anything like that to a broken home and you went into the military and you felt God calling you. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, like, and if you have had some form of like a spiritual um, component anywhere, that, that same thing has happened to me when I was in boot camp in the Marine Corps. Yeah, maybe right? it's boot camp. Bro. Maybe you're like, God help me. I don't know. Well, yeah, you feel like so helpless and you're like yeah. lying there. And I was lying there one night in my rack and I felt God just tell me like, you're going to be used. And I was like, dude, what are you talking about? Mm. Like, who's, I'm just trying to get by, keep my yeah. head down. <laughs> like, you know, and I was like, okay, whatever. And the very next, I don't want to turn this into me, but just like, like to, to top oh, on that, it's like the next thing, next few days, I noticed these big macho dudes are coming up to me in the middle of the night when everyone's asleep, asking if they could, if I could pray for them. Mm. And I'm like, dude, this dude that's got it all made, like no one wants to mess with this guy because he's the toughest dude in here calling or getting me at night asking if i'll go pray with him bawling his eyes out mm. he's like there's something different about you and i'm like the sick dude like <laughs> just wild, i'm man. on your side man don't beat me up you <laughs> know like <laughs> but yeah. all that to say is like uh you taking that step into listening to god and being faithful mm. is what this is all about right like manny yeah. and i were just telling you before we record is like our goal and our hope in doing this podcast, putting this effort in, putting this work in, is that people get something from it. Mm -hmm. There's so much crap in the world. There's so many freaking false prophets and so many people feeding you crap, you know, just to earn a buck. But we put a lot of effort into this because we genuinely want people to get something because mm -hmm. there is more to life. There is a God. There is all these things. And like our lives are testament to that. Every person mm -hmm. that comes through these doors and, and is a guest to us, whether they're believers or not, They've had some moment in their yeah. life that God has been like, yeah. no, you know, and um, again, to recap, you stepping out and taking that like that huge leap of faith to see where you're at now, like that, that is something that's so precious and something that you can't, you can't make up, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the first step is always faith in anything, you know, you're always kind of just putting your, you know, starting a business or like, you know, starting a podcast, mm -hmm. you know, 
trusting in God, you know, I felt like I got to this place where I was like, what would it look like if I just said yes? Mm. You know, if it was, you know, I had this, I was like, I want my life to be a Bible character, bro. You know, yeah. I was yeah. on that level where I was like, I see Peter, I see Paul, I see, and I wanted to be like that, you know, and, um, and then, you know, as you grow, you know, again, I think the faith and like seeing, you know, what God does with your life and how, I don't know, it's just like a different mindset. And I feel like, you know, there's people, you know, for a long time, I was like, you know, God is up here and I'm here, you know, but then making that connection of like, he partners, you know, and mm -hmm. there is, you can, you know, go through the filter of love, you know, and I think all these years finding out who God is and what God is and all this Christianity. I mean, I've been in the heights, bro. I've been in the heights of Christianity, like in the depths of Christian music industry and, and, and different types of churches and the way people do things. And, you know, I think I'm just learning a lot about love and grace, bro. Yeah. You know, that's what I didn't have when I was in the military. I didn't have, even when I was younger, I didn't learn love and I didn't learn grace. I didn't learn mercy. I didn't have compassion. You know, I didn't have any of those things growing up because they were really given to me, you know? And, um, and so as I've grown in faith, I've learned that it's just, you know, it's, it's better to give than to receive. Mm. You know? Good. It's crazy that you made that comment because that was, I kept it usually how it goes. If, if when a guest says something, I try to repeat to remind myself like, okay, mm. ask this, ask this, <laughs> ask this. And I, what I wanted to ask was in retrospect, it seems like God was, was kind of putting pieces together, you know, throughout your life, yeah. all because you said yes. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to know how you said yes. Like, what was it for you where you were like, okay, I'm, especially I, I keep thinking about that coffee shop because it's easy to be like to get big headed and say hey all these people are here because i'm i started this worship night so all these miracles and healings and all people come into jesus like they're here because of me so how, how do you say yes to god and deny yourself without getting big headed or being selfish especially as a like a musician yeah i think you i think the weight and responsibility of what a leader is mm -hmm should humble you mm. automatically you know i think taking on the idea of like being you know and i think for me it took me a long time to understand that i'm a leader you know we're all yeah. leaders everybody is a leader and i think um i wasn't being a leader for a long i didn't think like a leader mm. you know but i felt it in my heart i feel injustice i feel different things you know but it came out in rebellion in different ways mm. But right when you get into Christ and you get into God and you and you grow up, you know, you become a man, you become a, you know, a, you understand that leadership is serving, bro. Yeah. And you can't be a good leader unless you serve and serving will humble you, you know. So yeah. it's a back and forth of like I'm doing music and but, you know, and and again, yeah, doing this stuff. But the thing that really caught me was like this is bigger than me and this is like something mm. that felt like. I mean, I don't know if anybody else out there thinks those things, but for me, I'm like, well, what's the point of me being here, bro? You yeah. know, I grew up without a father. My mom and my dad, they hooked up when they were young. I wasn't playing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm out here just dancing on stage for these <laughs> white homies. I'm like, you know, whatever. So I, it's just like, I didn't know what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, and I'm, and again, it's like, you know, it, it, it was a, it was God kind of like showing me like, you have something and the way you can, you know, you, the gift, you know, people have gifts and I had a gift, you know, which was to perform, sing, dance. I can adapt real fast. You mm -hmm. know, I learned things real quick. Um, but, you know, it's like the gift is to be given away, you know, and, and you find the joy in that. And, so and I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning by seeing it, bro. I'm learning by being out on tour and I'm seeing these little kids or these old ladies or these people have been like, man, I was listening to your music when I was in the hospital room and I get tripped up, man, on my days, you know, on my, on my, on my bad days, you know, Nick, my homie, you know, I got homies that know, man, I, I'll be on the verge on, you know, on the cliff, just like, what am I doing this all for, you know? And, and again, learning about myself, learning about how I grew up and having patience. It's all like a, I think. I've just been learning a lot, especially the past couple of years, just how to deal with grief, how to deal with pain, how to deal with, 
myself, having patience with myself, you know, forgiving myself and forgiving others because, you know, every day, you know, you got to come with that. You can't just mm -hmm. be like holding on to, and that's what gets me, you know, caught up in my feelings, you know, is regret and anxiety, fear, all those things, right? But it's like the work, you know, it's like the enemy wants to keep you in the past and he wants to keep you in the future. But yep. He doesn't want you to be present, you know? Mm -hmm. So being able to, you know, kill those demons early in the day always helps me out. But sometimes I, I'm like, what am I doing this all for? Yeah. You know? What, you know? Well, you're human yeah. and you're in a position where you're going to be attacked more than, and no disrespect to somebody that's not quote unquote in your shoes, but like, you're in a spot where the enemy knows mm -hmm. you have the ultimate power to influence, mm -hmm. right? So he is going to use that and he is going to attack. And yeah. I think what you just said is so powerful because I think people, so many people have such a, a weird cliche image of us like Christians, right? Like, oh my gosh, you're a Christian. You don't understand what suffering is. Mm -hmm. Or, oh my gosh, you're, you're a, <laughs> a, a well-known Christian musician that has performed with some of the biggest names or written songs for some of the biggest names, you don't, you don't deal with stuff. Hmm. You're like, Oh really? <laughs> right. Like, but that skewed perception, yeah. like you're a human, you're a man, you deal with real stuff. Or they use it <clears throat> as like an excuse for them to be salty and stay down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like seeing someone and it might look like they're doing good, but like, dang bro, I'll never get there. Or like, I'm, you know, yeah, it might be easy for you to praise God because you smile and you got, you know, but I'm out here and da, 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 you know, but, yeah, you know, because I've done that too, you know, and, and, you know, the reality is, it's like, I think everybody is fighting for their lives every day, bro. Mm -hmm. Even if it's one thought, you know, it's like, you got to capture it, you know, you yeah. take every, every thought captive and you got to like fight for your life. And, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why the narrative of. God being a father and him loving you and all this stuff is like, you know, it, it really, really helps the individual who, you know, didn't grow up with a family, didn't grow up with all that stuff. But learning to like accept these emotions and know where they come from is all part of growth, you know. So uh, for a long time, it was all about the miracles and doing it right away and seeing the big bang and da, 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 da. But that's not really love all the time. Yeah. It says that love is patient, love is kind, you know, holds no record of wrong. It's a it's a long everlasting evolving journey and learning how to love yourself and learning how to love you know that little child you know what i'm saying you know i did this mm -hmm. exercise one time where like sat the, my little myself you know sat him in a chair eight years old and caught him up you know or, or i let them sit in the chair and i let him just start complaining and, and talking about his fears when i'm feeling those things you know and then me being a father how would i talk to that you know that individual yeah. and um little exercises like that to where you can, you know, you know, I think the enemy definitely wants to, you know, wants to, but sometimes, you know, it's yourself, it's your past trauma. It's the stuff that we haven't uh -huh. really healed yet or given the time or given, you know, the ability to heal. So I've been learning how to do that too and balance and learn, learning like God's okay. And he's not in a rush, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's here for the long run and, and it's, and it's like a lifelong journey learning how to invite them into the places that are home. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. And like, I just That's felt like clip. I sat in church. That's the clip. <laughs> um, well, my man, like I genuinely appreciate you. I love, I love watching you. I'm always a fan. I text him like randomly. This was months ago, but my daughter cash her, her, one of her favorite songs at the time was one of his songs. Mm -hmm. And so I would literally start every morning with that song on in our little Sono speakers in our kitchen. <laughs> so I was like starting our morning every single, every single morning with Ryan for like months. Cause my daughter's a dude, she's a creature of habit. When she likes something, she likes it. And so we go downstairs, she'd be like, Dada, can I get a coffee and can you play that song? And I'm like, what dude, you're four bro. But um, I appreciate you. Uh, Manny, you got anything? Yeah, yeah, where, where can people find you? I have so many more questions. We'll have to have you back on. Uh, but where, where can people find you, um, promote any music that's out, you yeah. know, um, and then how, how can people get a hold of you? Um, I'm on every music streaming platform, YouTube, um, iTunes, Spotify, okay. anywhere you listen to me, it's all, it's, it's all over. So and what about socials? Socials, you can find me at Ryan Ellis 
my okay. nose. Uh, it's just my nose. Excuse me. Right. Everyone's got a blue check mark now, bro. I know. It's because they yeah. paid for it. They got it, dude. They I'm paid like, for I'm not it. I was looking through it. my comments. Yeah, I was like, yo, look it. at all these blue check marks following me, bro. Yeah. I was like, oh, this one got like 300 followers. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need a blue check mark. But everyone's a blue check mark now. You know what I'm saying? It's Everyone's verified. Exactly. Yeah, I listen to it. I like listening to him on Spotify a lot. It's right here. Look at that. Yeah, I got the new live album out. Look at that. I know. I'll, have, we'll, we'll, I'll subscribe. Which one you like, listen. Ben? Which one you like the most? Your song? You know what song I like the most. Heart of the Father. Jesus, your name. That's, the, that's Cash's song, man. I think for me, and then we'll wrap up, but you have a lot of rad songs. There's a lot of awesome worship out there. But for me, as a father now, hmm. seeing... One, it's my daughter, right? Like she's got my she's got my heart just oh, yeah. she just destroys me. She but, owns you. Dude, she literally owns me. But seeing my daughter like sing that song and understand f- for her in that moment, like what worship is to her at that time at four is something that speaks so much like mm-hmm. volume to me. And so when she heard it, because I played it one time in the mm-hmm. car and she loves like a good beat. Yeah. And she like heard the beat, and she likes in her car seat, dude. And I'm not kidding you. In my truck, in her car seat, yeah, like bobbing her head, <laughs> like bobbing her head. And then we got home, didn't think anything, right? We get home, and she goes, "Mama, Dad had played me a really good song." And I was like, "What?" Dang, and then bro. she literally calls it "Heart of the Father." What? My da- she's that's a new title. She, she's she's my a, Ryan Ellis. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> she's wild, dude. She's a four year old, but I swear she's like ten. Um, but so for me that it, it like melts in my heart in a way. And then it got me to start listening as a father, yeah. like the a heart of a father, like, like thinking of God's unconditional love for us is something I can't even fathom because of what I know my love for my kids are. hundred percent. And it's like drastically rocked my world in the best way. Yeah. And I mean, your song is a big part of that. Thanks. I mean, that's. I mean, shout out to Mac Montgomery. He's the guy who came up with the hook. We were in Isla Vista, and that was, you know, there was a lot of tags. And so he had this song. Uh, the, the beginning tag was, Jesus, your name is power, it's breath. And yeah. he came up with the first part. And um, and then we collabed on the rest. But, I mean, that that idea of the heart of the father, that, that's what I saw when I moved up to Ivy, when I moved up to Isla Vista, seeing, you know, kids wiling out, man. And especially when I was so legalistic, but it was like, it really broke down those walls. Mm. And I think that's just how I live my life now too, bro. I don't really look to like try to, you know, perfection, you know, I'm trying to just enjoy the, enjoy the journey in yeah. the process. But because, you know, having kids and being a father now, it's like, I can't imagine, I can't imagine rejecting my yeah. kid. You know? Yeah. I couldn't imagine rejecting him for anything. And so, my eyes are kind of just like that for people now. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of Damn. grown my faith, bro. And how I, and that's how I see God. I mean, dude, I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like God knows the real ones, bro. Mm-hmm. He knows. He knows the hearts and he knows the real ones and he's, he's looking out, bro. So that's how, so that's how I see it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and then where, where, like genuinely, like how do you guys make money now? Like, do you guys make money? From Spotify, like how can people Man, support I'm st- you? I'm still living off of faith, bro. You know what I'm saying? I have it's it's royalties and and getting booked for shows and different things like that, worship nights and. So if someone like listens merch, to it, yeah, can you get paid? Isn't it like pennies though? Yeah, that's terrible. That's a whole other podcast. You know yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Well, but, go support him, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Go buy go something from to support his website. Him. Go buy merch. Yeah. Go listen to his music. Go to his concert when whenever he's in your town. Ryan, thank you so much for yeah, coming on, you, man. I'm glad you guys know thanks each other. Remember, guys, that everything was impossible until someone did it.